Hello and welcome to this uh, guide on practical automation. Uh, now this will probably be the last video I make on this map seed. I've been on it at for 2550 cycles on this map and uh, the loading times are crazy. Plus I'm going away on a um, skiing vacation for a week and when I get back it's probably just two or three days until the work update hits the job where you can assign different jobs to to uh, transport belts and stuff so that would probably be a perfect opportunity to start a new new base or a new on a new fresh on a new map uh, I remember when I started with automation that in the beginning you actually do fine without it so and there's a lot of YouTube videos on automation but a lot of the stuff is actually like cool stuff you can do with it like make uh, a different a little melody by turning them off and on or uh, so I thought I'd make something more like uh, directed to practical use of them and you can pretty much divide it into things either uh, make systems that are hands-off meaning you don't have to monitor uh, different systems or water levels and stuff like that uh, it will just regulate itself automatically uh, so you can concentrate on building and, and constructing new stuff and, and the map will handle itself or your base will handle itself uh, and the second thing is uh, creating uh, or, or making machines work in a way that is different from maybe how it was intended or how they work normally to create new effects or, or a combination of machines working together by using automation so uh, if we start by, by by a few examples to where you need systems to be hands-off where you can use it. A very obvious one is of course uh, measuring different uh, temperatures or pressures to control amount of liquid or, or gas pressure by using term sensor, atmos sensor or hydro sensor. Term sensor is to control uh, temperature Hydro sensor, um, of course, is, is water and atmosphere sensor is, of course, uh, atmosphere. And, and pretty much turn off or on systems depending on the, the level of, of the, the temperature or water pressure or whatever, right? So, for example, if you look here, I have uh, uh, several systems here, but pretty much hydro sensors, uh, which will make different things happen when the water level is not high enough. So I will pretty much pump in more water, so it will be connected in some ways to a liquid shutoff. Um, so you see here, if I unpause it, I have liquid shutoff. So now I have different inflows of water, but you can ignore that for now. You can just connect one of these straight off to to a liquid shutoff. Um, another uh, example of that would be in here, where I have somewhere I have uh, atmos sensors. And what they pretty much do is if the natural gas uh, pressure is too low, they will turn on a lot more of the fertilizers. Uh, there's also some more automation here, but we can ignore that for now. It's just a fail safe that if my level of polluted water gets too high, that will actually also turn on a few of these systems. So that's really neat ways I don't really have to monitor how much natural gas I produce. I can just turn on some extra machines if I get too low uh, pressure on the natural gas so so my whole machinery doesn't fail uh, because i have too little natural gas to support all my power plants um, another uh, example of that would be for example let's move upwards it's a bit too big here for example i don't want the polluted oxygen level to be too high uh, because uh, morbs don't produce polluted oxygen over a certain threshold so I have some uh, pressure sensor or hydro uh, atmos sensor to actually only vent or, or use part of the polluted oxygen if the pressure is actually high enough uh, so it's easy way to kind of automate your systems another thing that I think uh, we won't really need because they're gonna introduce something called smart batteries and I guess I haven't really played around with the early kind of access to to, to the work up update uh, is um, control of power but here is a power control It's pretty much a manual generator so what will happen if the batteries go low if my batteries that I got somewhere over here right if they're too low that someone will run here and I have a little button let's see where were I here a button so when they run here they're gonna push the button and that will act activate uh, 
a few of my extra power plants. So it's a way to, to not use more uh, resources than I actually need to keep my power going. Now I have an extra little automation here. You see it's actually just, I could just have this one directly connected to the power with buffer gates, but I also actually have a NOT gate here directly connected to the manual generator. And what that does is when you click this button, um, the buffer gates will turn on, so this one will become active, and the manual generator will become inactive, so you can't actually use the manual generator. So it's a little tweak if you've seen this design before with using the manual generator as a um, um, battery sensor. Uh, this is a tweak, so, so they will just get the effect of pushing a button because they will run there, kind of stomp on the button, but then they can't use the manual generator and they will just go on doing other stuff. But the process have already started because of the buffer gates, they will keep producing power for, for quite some time. Um, but I can use the duplicant for building or whatever while they work up the batteries to, to full level. So there's some examples of where you just kind of make it easy for yourself by automating stuff. Uh, ways where you can use it for, for example, use machines working diff different in a different way. So here's a great example. I'm, I'm cooking some uh, polluted water here. This machine won't actually work after the next update, so we can ignore that for now. But here I'm, I'm boiling water, polluted water. What happens when you boil polluted water is polluted water have a small, like a really slim chance to convert to polluted air. So if I didn't do anything in here, over time I would get some polluted air in here building up from polluted water converting into polluted air before it had a chance to boil, like little by little. So I have a pump here. And the pump pretty much goes to one of those gas filters. So I filter out the polluted air and send it up uh, to, to some puffs that will consume it and make slime, right? The thing is, most of the time, this one will be running dry. It will only pump through uh, pure oxygen because the polluted air generated here is so slim, right? It's not a lot. Uh, so I don't want it to work at full speed. So what I did is a little loop here. You, this is probably one of the... Uh, I would say most practical little uh, gadgets you can make from automation. It's uh, it's pretty much a buffer gate, if I can actually click it, connected to a NOT gate, uh, connected to another buffer gate, uh, and then connected back again to, 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 to the original uh, buffer gate, but also splitting to the stuff you want to control. What this creates is kind of a blink, where here you see you can control up and down time, so let's see if we can play this a bit slower. I mentioned this in other videos as well. So here is the uptime and here is the downtime control. Uh, and if I, in this case, I put this one to three second downtime and two second uptime. This means it will run for two seconds and be down for three seconds, which means that it will run at less than even 50% speed, like 40% speed, right? Uh, so it uses a lot less energy. So if you have pumps or something that you don't want to run full speed, this is a great way of doing it. You can just nerf the machinery down. Same goes for example, liquid tepidizer. I think actually this one pumped out some steam right now. That's why it broke here. Had to fix that. Um, another example is of course the liquid tepidizer, although this will not really work after the update to, to, to superheat stuff with a liquid tepidizer in the same way it does now, but can get back to that when we play with the new update in, in future videos. But you can pretty much control up and down time of the liquid tepidizer. Here I have it connected to a power shut off to the power to the liquid tepidizer. The reason I don't have a conduct, um, an automation wire up to the liquid tepidizer is if it's really hot, it can actually burn off. So I'd rather just cut a power to it. But regardless, you have the same thing with like the uh, buffer gate connected to a not gate connected to a buffer gate to control up and down time. So that's a really good practical example of where you can like make machines work in a different way than you actually, that's actually like originally, you could say intended. You can also shift around um, liquid um, depending on temperatures. So for example, uh, in this um, hydrogen bubbler, um, I want uh, the hydrogen to be as cold as possible, but not cold enough to actually solidify. And the way I do it is pretty much have an um, atmosensor in here. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. I have a, a, a thermosensor up here that uh, 
regulates the, the hydrogen temperature and shuts off uh, these thermoregulators here. Uh, but the way I do it is I actually don't really shut them off because I want the hydrogen to keep circulating even if if these ones are off. So the way I've done it is instead I connected it I connected this one to two different uh, gas sh uh, valves or gas shutoffs. So if the temperature is high high enough to actually run these without the hydrogen freezing, it will go through them here. And if it's not high enough, it will actually just pass them by, but it will keep circulating. Same thing you can do, for example, if you do a cooling loop with oil, that you can have automation to, to decide what pipe the oil will go through. So here I have a thermosensor, and if the temperature is, is very high, uh, the oil will go up here, cooling it down. But if it's not very high, I don't want to, it to run too cold because I actually have some timber reeds here and I want to keep the temperature rather steady. It will actually just pass it by and go up here. So the, fit, the way I've done it is I have a thermosensor. Uh, then I have a buffer gate and that's just to, to actually keep it running a bit longer. Uh, even if to try to like, get the temperature down a fair, fair bit before it actually switches away. And then I just have a NOT gate connected to the other one. So if this one is active, if the temperature is high enough, uh, this liquid shutoff here will be active and the oil will go all this way around. And if uh, the temperature is not high enough, of course with the NOT, this one will be inactive and thus this one will be active through the NOT gate and the liquid just pass straight past here and just skip this whole loop. So it's a good way if you want to control temperatures in certain areas. Another example of where you use automation is for example for um, mechanized airlocks. This is a mechanized airlock and it can be good um, I, if you have checked out water airlocks for example. Um, they're really good, really efficient, you'd get a soggy feet debuff. But imagine now if you wanted an airlock in a really cold area where it's like minus 30 degrees, then the water would freeze. You could of course use oil, but what if it's minus 60? Then oil won't work because it will freeze too. So what uh, a mechanized airlock is good for is pretty much in different situations where you don't want a liquid airlock. And the way you do it is with automation. So in this case, I have some uh, mechanized airlocks here. And if there's no air inside, they will be open. If there's air inside, they will be closed and the pump will pump out all the air, and when the air is gone, they will open up again, creating the result in, if you have somewhat decent pressure, what happens when the duplicant run through is air flowing from here, in this case, polluted oxygen flowing from here, uh, the doors will go shut, everything will get pumped out, and then open up again. Now, I actually locked this one down because I don't want them to enter, but that's the principle. So it's also a really good way to use automation. Uh, the automation circuit for that is, is pretty simple. Um, you have an atmos sensor seen here. Yes, I have two just because measure it in several spots, right? But pretty much an atmos sensor. Um, and that one is connected uh, with a NOS gate to the door. You don't really need some automation for the pump because the pump will, if it's always on, it will pump until there's no atmosphere regardless. So, and then it will stop and not cause you many So it's, it's fairly simple to do it. So there's some great things you can use automation for. It's of course a lot more uses than the few I showed here, uh, but it gives you kind of a start what, what is actually practical to use it for. Uh, thanks, and I'll see you guys in future videos, probably a bit like a bit more than a week from now, uh, once the new update go, goes live. I also have some ideas for Don't Star videos since I like, especially Don't Star together, that I play together with my girlfriend, and I have some things I think could be fun to show from that. Um, big thank you for watching, and uh, see you later. Cheers.